In this video, we're going to be covering Azure DevOps for product owners and business analysts. If you're not currently part of an organization that uses Azure DevOps, you can go to Microsoft.com and actually try it out for free. This tutorial is actually going to be me using the free version. So everything that I'm going to be doing here is something that you're going to be able to do and practice yourself as well. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Once you've started your free trial, you're going to end up on a page that looks a little bit like this. It's going to be empty, of course, um, because you wouldn't have created any new projects, um, but you can simply create a new project here, um, name it, give it a description if you want to. Um, also, here in the advanced section, um, there's version control, which if you're a product owner or business analyst, probably isn't something that you're going to be terribly worried about. However, in the work item processes, um, there are a few options, Agile, Basic, CMMI, and Scrum, and it does have an impact on how your board actually looks mostly around what kind of uh, work items are going to be available to you. Um, for the project that we're going to be going through today, I'm going to be using Scrum. Um, but as we go through, I'll show some examples of how um, uh, the basic setup might look as well as I tried that out beforehand. So let's go ahead and jump into a project. So we'll jump into the Scrum project here. So the first place you'll land is on the summary page. Um, at this point, if you're truly a beginner and you're not working with the team, the summary page is not going to be very important for you because most of what you're going to be here showing here is tracking like the history of how the team has been working, what features have been produced, things like that. And at this point, you wouldn't have any of that. So I wouldn't worry too much about the summary or the dashboards just yet. Um, for our purposes, I think the first place we can talk about is the wiki. Um, I like to use the wiki as a place to kind of manage high level information about the project as well as how the, the, the application currently works. Um, so we'll go ahead and create a wiki page here. For this tutorial, we're going to pretend we're making an e-commerce platform. I already rent, went over to ChatGBT to get some, some verbiage so I don't have to make stuff up on the fly. Um, one thing that, ha that should be noted about the wiki, it is a true wiki. So you can see here it's using wiki syntax. Um, but it's showing it in kind of a rich text mode. I What I copied here was actually rich text and it converted it into a wiki. Um, this is very um, DevOpsy of it for it to be straight up wiki syntax, but just you know, know that if, if you would like um, to use a rich text editor, you can do that and, and paste it on over. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that, close, and here is my first page. I personally like to use wikis as a place to show kind of the current functionality as well as any project summaries um, and things like that. I'm not going to jump too much into it here, but as an example, if I come over here to uh, the wiki that I kind of started, you can see I keep things like architecture specifications, you know, functional decomposition. So whatever the major features are, um, and then for those features, things like, you know, what are the business rules that govern them, interfaces, process flows, things like that, the types of things that if a new, you know, product owner was joining the team or a business analyst was joining the team or really anybody is joining the team and they need to get ramped up on how things work or also know as they create, you know, user stories and things like that, what things might break and what people they might need to go talk to. Um, I like to document a lot of that information here so the team just has that available to them and they could move a little bit quicker. All right, back to our new project. Okay, so as mentioned, as a product owner or business analyst, the wiki and the boards are going to kind of be your two main areas. So let's go ahead and jump over to the boards. In this space, you're going to mostly be working with work items. There are several different work items that become available to you if you choose the Agile or Scrum um, project type. Uh, if you use the basic type, you're only going to get a couple of these, um, and I'll kind of talk through those. And so at a high level, a bug is if anything is broken with the application. An epic is the highest level of capability in a platform or a project or a product, um, which breaks down into a feature, uh, which breaks down into a product uh, backlog item, which those can be broken down into subtasks. And then there's also test cases for I, obviously when you get into the, the test cycle. And then any impediments that are usually going to be used by somebody like a scrum master uh, to keep track of and making sure they're tackling those for the team. But for our purposes today, we're going to be focused on epic, epics, features, and product backlog items. Let's go ahead and create a product backlog item. 
because um, that's usually the smallest unit of work that a product owner or business analyst is typically working with. So just so we can see what that kind of looks like. Um, the interface is pretty straightforward. Uh, there's only really one required field, and that is the, the title, which makes sense. You got to be able to call it something so you can recognize it when you see it in the list. Um, and so we're just going to call this one pro oops, product backlog item number one. Um, okay, pretty straightforward. So we'll go ahead and hit save there. And then we go back to our work items, and there's our product backlog item. One of the nice things, if you already have some things kind of documented out, especially if you were working in an Excel file, is the ability to import work items. Sometimes it's just easier, especially when you're just brainstorming or trying to put things on paper to work in a different medium like Excel to just quickly, you know, add a bunch of stuff to a list and then you can come and if you prefer to do it that way or you already have something documented elsewhere it makes it really easy to import uh, your work items so I'm gonna go ahead and choose the file uh, what I've noticed is that as long as the file types or rather the columns match the headers in Azure DevOps it'll import without an issue go ahead and hit import there and you can see that my epic features and backlog items have been imported it is critical critically important to remember to hit save here um, if you jump away too fast or don't hit save or go back to the the backlog um, this won't save and you won't have all your new stuff so I'm gonna go ahead and hit save here save save I could have also done save all items um, and then now they're here and I'm gonna go back to the work items and you can see that they're all here. Now the work items is kind of like a flat list, right? It's supposed to be just a list of everything that's available to you. Um, once, once you're in the kind of the mode of doing the work, you're probably gonna actually be in the backlog. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and close this. This is the product backlog where you're gonna be managing most of the work that you'll be doing. This is kind of the space you do that from. Um, again, if you click any one of the items you can see here, it opens it up and you can start editing it um, in a modal here. Uh, you can add a descriptions, titles, make any modifications you need to. And I'm gonna go ahead and add um, some information here. Add a description. Do not want that to be bold, that's weird. And add some exceptions criteria. This is also something that is made available to you when you select an Agile or Scrum methodology. If you had done the basic project type, you only would see the description here. So that's also something that's kind of nice um, using the Agile or Scrum project types. I personally like to always use uh, this user story syntax as a I want so that, as well as documenting my exceptions criteria in Gherkin because it forces me to think about the different scenarios um, and be a little bit more thoughtful in creating the user stories and ensuring that whoever is going to be working on this and developing these user stories kind of understands why we're doing it, the value it's going to provide, the scenarios that we want to make sure we have covered, et cetera, and so forth. Um, it's also important to note that from this view, you can also add relationships. Um, and so if something is related to something else in the backlog, there's all kinds of different ways to link items. Um, and how you use this is really going to be dependent on how the team wants to work. You can add the parent-child relationships here as well, um, but I actually find it a little bit easier to do that from the board itself. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to hit save and close here. And so if I go back to the board, you can right-click items. Um, and here you can go to change parent. Um, the reason I like this better is because when you're in the, the description kind of view, you know, it's asking you, do you... Is, to select a child or a parent and it can get confusing as as to is the story that you're working on or editing going to be the child or is what you're adding going to be the child and so it's a little bit confusing so from my perspective it's just a little bit easier this way um, and this particular item is for the shopping cart functionality so i'm going to associate it to that uh, feature um, and then if we come back here to the backlog kind of settings you, i could turn on parents so you can see that this feature is now or this uh, backlog item is now associated to that feature and we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do that for this one as well 
um, just so it looks nice and neat. A shopping cart. Okay. Another useful thing is if you're already here, um, and in fact, I'm going to add this to the other uh, feature just so we could see them all on the screen. Another useful thing is when you're on this screen here, if you're looking at this and you're saying, okay, well, product catalog, I can think of another user story that's going to be associated to that right away or another um, backlog item, you can come here and hit the plus icon and it's automatically going to allow you to create a backlog item and add it as a child. And so if, if you're again here trying to go rapid fire and just add things quickly and have those relationships already there, just to demonstrate that really quickly, I'm going to go ahead and add a backlog item to the product catalog. Uh, view product page. Uh, pretty straightforward, save and close. Okay. In addition to right clicking, it has the standard kind of keyboard short, shortcut. So if you hit, if you have an item selected, you hold down shift and you click to another item, it'll highlight everything in between, as well as if you hit control, you can select multiple items. Um, here, I'm gonna go ahead and do that to add this to the parent online orders, which I forgot to do earlier. And so now, um, those are associated to that parent item. Quick refresh there, and now you can see everything in the entire hierarchy. So the overall parent is online orders. You can see that some of the major features are the product catalog, the shopping cart, and even looking at it in this way, you could probably pretty quickly think through some other child items you might want to add to this epic, like the checkout space or maybe the ability to make payments or maybe even things like tracking an order and things like that. So it kind of allows you to see things a little bit more holistically and in an organized way to help you think through some of the things that you might be need to be able to do and quickly add those features to the backlog. Now that we have a product backlog, it's time to manage some sprints. You could actually start managing the sprints from right here on this page. Um, and so if I go to this kind of settings uh, thing here um, and turn on planning, and so it creates this side pane uh, for planning. Again, if you pick the Agile or Scrum project types, it's going to create some sprints for you. If you had clicked uh, or chosen the basic project type, it would just be empty and you would have to create the first sprint yourself. Um, and so let's go ahead and try adding some items to the sprint. So I can add this item to the sprint here. Um, and this item to the sprint here. So sprint one is going to be primarily focused on the shopping cart, obviously. And then we can say for sprint two, we're going to start working on the product uh, catalog. And so now we can easily start planning. And now let's jump over to the sprint page because from this space, you can see the sprints, but you can't do much about editing the sprints. So let's jump over to the sprint space. Um, it's going to start out opening on this, the current sprint. So this is sprint one here, you can see. Um, and the first kind of space is the task board. So it organizes things initially by the user stories themselves. So these are the stories that I added. You could organize these tasks by individuals as well. And so again, this creates another easy way to create those shortcuts um, for developers as they're working on this user story to just go ahead and add tasks. So it, it creates a task here right away. Um, and there you go. And so that subtask has been created. Um, likewise, I can go to the backlog view here and I could see the backlog of that item. And you can actually see here that it has that subtask that I created. So it allows you to kind of see everything here at once. Um, you could also set the dates for your sprint here as well. We're going to start it today, end it in a week. Go ahead and hit save there. And then we'll go ahead and go to sprint two here and add some dates to that as well. Uh -huh. So it's already highlighted the, the start or the end of the last sprint or the first day after the last sprint, which is nice. And it actually automatically will select the increment that you selected in the previous sprint. So if your sprints are always the same time frame, which they absolutely should be, uh, it makes it a little bit easier to just pop in there, hit the sprint, select dates um, and really just click whatever is already made available to you and kind of have some confidence that it's going to select the right dates for you. Um, another reason um, that that could be useful or valuable to you is because when you go to the delivery plans, which is another space that might be useful uh, to somebody like a product owner or a product manager 
uh, or even a business analyst or scrum master is to look at the plan here. So I've already created a plan. Um, and you can see here, it kind of just shows you, you know, in a more Gantt charty kind of way, like what things are going to be happening, what where things land in the sprint. And even from this view, if you're looking at this and you're saying, oh, wait, I'd like to add X, Y, Z, or we're missing these types of items in the backlog, you could go ahead and add an item. So you could actually use this screen to plan out, you know, your kind of roadmap um, and create items um, for your backlog. And I've chosen for this one um, to do it at a at a backlog item level, um, but you could also do it at a feature level. So if you want to plan out your features sprint after sprint on what things you're going to be getting done, um, you could do it from here as well. That was my quick overview of Azure DevOps for product owners and business analysts. I hope that you found that helpful. If you have any additional questions, let me know in the comments and I'll either answer you there or create a new video just like this one to answer your questions. So subscribe to see your questions get answered and thanks for watching.